I would like to point out something that uh, in every video you see Daniel there doing all the cleaning up. There's two big reasons for that. Number one is he's a much better person than I am and just does it. And number two, because I'm physically disabled, but mostly number one. Right, Daniel? Huh? Yeah. I said you usually do the, the cleanup because you're a much better person than I am. Yeah. And I'm disabled. No, just because I'm a much better person than you. See, I told you it was probably number one. <laughs>
when you fire it single action, you have a much lighter trigger. As you can see in single action, a little bit of take up, there's your wall, and then it just breaks. Reset. It's a little bit longer than like on my 1911s, but it's not terrible. It is audible, and you can feel it reset, and then you can just go straight into the next shot. If you release it all the way, the reset is all the way out, and then you can go ahead and pull the trigger again. This being a newer pistol, I'm going by the 18 on the slide, indicating that this was built in 2018. It is not a stagey trigger. It just pulls through and breaks. It does have a little bit of an audible click right there because it is putting the hammer in the half cocked mode. I do apologize. I'm trying to use my wall as my backdrop to show things like the hammer. Overall, I like the trigger pull. I think it's gonna be pretty nice out at the range. I don't normally fire my first shot double action, but when I'm carrying it, I will have to learn to, so I'll probably practice that this weekend. The magazines are 18 rounders. They appear to be Mechgar. They have a smooth finish on them. They do have witness holes on the side, not on the back. So these are not as expensive as some Mechgar mags I've seen, but they are drop freeze and they seem to be of high quality. Standard black followers, so they're not like Teflon followers or anything. And you do get two when you buy it. However, this one is loaded with my self-defense rounds. I carry Federal HST 147 grain for my 9mm. And for my 45, I have Sig Sauer uh, Elite 230 grain hollow points. One thing I'm noticing with this, you hear that rattling? I'm not going to rack the slide, but even when it's inserted, it's making noise. So I think a spring is binding up. Check the weapon real quick. Clear. But I'm so I'm going to have to probably take the base pad off because uh, I think the problem is down here. It's binding because I've loaded it and unloaded it like seven times and it's still making noise. Being a CZ-75, the disassembly is pretty easy. However, one thing I've noticed on my pistol, and I'm not sure if it's on all the Phantoms and CZ-75 products, because my P09 had markings and P10s have markings, but there is literally no markings on this slide as to where you need to hold it to disassemble it. And it's really annoying. However, if you do it enough times, you will learn where to bring it back to because they're all about an eighth of an inch back. And you will need something to push the pin out because it is very tight. So I'm gonna do that real quick using the base of the magazine. Very tight, might loosen up, but I'm not sure. Pull your cross pin out. Once you have the cross pin out, all you have to do is simply slide the frame out from under the slide. I said slide twice. This is a CZ-75, so it has the inverted rail systems. As you can see, the rails are actually on the outside of the slide versus the inside, like on a 1911. And it has internal rails on the frame. This being a Phantom, it has a plastic frame, so it actually has metal inserts in the frame for the slide. However, if it was the all steel version, this would just be rails front to back. Disassembling the slide is pretty easy. You can grab your recoil spring and guide rod. It is not a captive captive. I know that's a weird saying, but it's fit very tightly over the end of the guide rod, so it's not going to just come off, but I would still be careful to make sure you don't lose it. To remove the barrel, you just simply slide it forward, tilt it up, and pull it out of the back. This has the browning tilting lockup you see two lugs up top, and it does have an eyelet for the cross pin to go through, or the slide pin. I'm not sure the right terminology, sorry. Uh, being a CZ-75, it's basically a knockoff of the Browning High Power, so it is very simple, it's very elegant, and it works. It has an external extractor, much like a High Power, and uh, yeah, that's it. You are field stripped. You can clean your frame, you can clean your slide, you can clean your barrel, you can do whatever you want to at this point. Looking inside the slide, it is very nicely machined. There are no markings and weird edges that you need to worry about, which is 
to be expected for a pistol of its reputation. Reassembly is just the opposite of the disassembly. You just take your barrel, drop it in, boom. Take your guy rod and recoil spring, put it in this way. Make sure that it sits parallel to the slide. If it's sitting at any kind of weird up and down angle comparison to where you want it, it could potentially pop out during reassembly. You can do this upside down, you can do it right side up, that's totally up to you. Put your slide back on the frame. You need to pull it back. It's hard to see because it's an all black pistol, but there is a notch inside that square that you need to line up to in order to get your pin to come in. And that's where you learn where your disassembly is going to be if your frame and slide aren't marked like mine. Again, I'm not sure if they're all like that or if mine just managed to get out of the factory without its markings. Push your slide lock back in, rack your slide, make sure it's working, and you're back in business. Another word on the sights, they are not night sights, they are what are called luminescent sights. They pick up light and they hold it for a little bit, but they don't glow on their own. So they're not Tridion, they're not Trigicon, they're nothing like that. So again, you'd have to go to like the CZ website or take a look at like Cheaper Than Dirt or a few other websites to find some different sights. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to keep this pistol. So for now, I'm going to take it to the range with the sights it came with, and we're going to shoot it and see how it acts. Now, before I send you out to the range, I want to talk about something real quick, and that is I want my pistols to perform as well as they can. I want to take only myself into consideration when I'm firing a pistol, which means my ability to aim it and shoot it and, you know, handle the firearm. So to that end, everything I buy, be it new or used, gets taken down, field stripped, cleaned, and re-oiled. I know that they ship with assembly grease or assembly lube and things like that, but there could be gunk in the barrel, there could be stuff on the springs, there could be all kinds of little weird little things that could cause problems that normally wouldn't if you take 20 minutes and just go over your pistol before you take it out. Now I know some guys will take a gun right out of the box and they say, oh it should work perfectly, no problem whatsoever, and just take it out and put 500 rounds through it. More power to you. If that's your criteria, if you want to take something that's been unprepared, shipped, and you just grabbed it right out of the box and start shooting it, that's up to you. But I prefer to give my firearms the best possible chance. I want them to run, it takes 20 minutes, and it also allows me to learn the pistol. So. I'm going to give this pistol the best possible chance to run perfect. I would do that with a high point. Although those have roll pins, so probably not. Yeah, that'll work. So I used to wonder why you always got loaded before me, and now I know why, because I'm trying to be on the internet. <laughs> so we're out here with Daniel. He's the one being the man today and not wearing a jacket. I'm suffering from puskinitis, and I think I got something sticking in the back of my leg that hurts. So anyways, what are you shooting today, Daniel? Sig P6 and which is I don't have the Hudson today. Oh, my dad wanted to shoot it, so, so he's like, You gotta wait. I gotta wait. <laughs> so I have a Sig P6, yeah, show it up, which is the German police, yep, version of the Sig P225. The only main, the only main difference is it's a heavier spring and one thing else I can't remember not sure but it's a single that's stack it. so that's fun yeah single stack nine millimeter yeah so he's gonna be shooting that and then I am gonna be doing our hundred rounds through this the phantom Daniel of course will be shooting this too I don't need to shoot his 226 or 225 or 223 or TTF, whatever the fuck it is, but uh, we'll worry about that later. So, all right. You don't want to shoot at shoot and see first, so you can see your shots. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Hold on. At least on the. Uh... At least on the GoPro. <sighs> no, I mean at least uh, on the first few shots of a gun you've never fired. Yeah, that's fair. So, uh, you gonna go first or? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I'm good me... to go. Okay. At any time. Oh, hold on. I have a big fat head, they don't.
Not bad. Clear. Pretty good grouping for your first time. Yeah. You're going to hold on to that one. Yep. I share my toys. So, anyways. Oh, wait. Does that got the Aguila at the top? Yes. Here. Give me that one. I always keep one of my rounds, so I'm keeping one of my aluminum case ones, and I'm going to burn one of my Aguilas for the 100. So, first time, and they're both rattly. Doesn't have external safety, so downrange, buddies. this dude clear yes clear that way I can shoot it with the CZ and we oh because you're gonna keep the one because you're doing well no just saw on camera we can tell which one yeah I have my GoPro actually set up to capture the first sets of shots I'm not sure how long the battery is gonna last because I accidentally left it on the entire time so weapon is safe handing it over he's gonna put his first 18 rounds through it and we'll uh, see what his opinion is of the pistol so, on your honor. Going hot. Because it's very much like your Browning, isn't it? It gives you that, I mean, it's got a longer frame, but uh, what's your opinions? We're going to walk up to the targets, too. I like it. It's got a longer trigger pull than a 1911 style, obviously, but... Right, <clears throat> being that it's double action. But... Come on. It's got a good recoil pattern, straight up and down. Yeah, it was pretty easy for me to find my target. I mean, that's my first 18. I had one flyer, but I was pretty much grouped there. And he's really grouped in the center there. Yeah, I had a couple a couple of loose ones, but... Uh, uh, I flinched. Well, this was your first shot, as usual. And then you started walking them right in here, and then, yeah. I yeah, mean, I was that's, flinching a little bit, but... But that's a beautiful shot pattern, so... Yeah. It's something you could probably uh, pick that up and be pretty proficient with it very quickly, so... Yeah, Definitely. You know, and compared to the Beretta last week, obviously, I'm not having any issues either. So, we're going to just do some shooting around, and then I'm going to record the rest of the shots. They're not all going to be on the GoPro until I move way back, so, because I'm trying to save that battery. Yeah, that's the only thing that the 1911 was making me appreciate a little bit more, was the fact that you can only get eight. Although, I wanted to buy the 15-rounders, and I still haven't, so. You going back at your circle? Huh? You going to your circle? Yeah, probably. Is that making you want that Legion more, though? Yeah. I like this. As typical with me, left-handed fun. As typical with me, I didn't push the mag all the way in. There we go. Jesus Christ. All over. So what I think of that, how's that hold working for you? The last two were on that. I couldn't tell this target's too blown out. Yeah, Where yeah. were they going? Uh, you were pretty much dead right in. You had one that was a little off to the right, but the rest were right near the top of the circle. So it was wiggling the top of the fragment. It's throwing me off a little because I've been shooting with just one eye for so long. Right. I mean, you're supposed to shoot with two anyways, so it, it's... But my sight acquisition is a lot faster. Is it? 
Yeah, because it's coming because I'm left eye dominant, and it's right on my left eye, so it comes down right into it. Right. So. For those of you that don't know, what he's doing is called the car. Yeah, C A R. It stands for something I can't remember. It means completely angled reasoning. No. It's made up by a law enforcement. It's a new way of holding. Uh, if you've seen John Wick, Keanu Reeves, the way he holds when he comes into a room, he holds like this. Obviously, it's clear. I just showed you. But uh, he holds it. It's like almost like it naturally lays down, so it puts it in your line of sight. So he seems to like it. I'm going to try it now, too. Yeah. You just rest your shooting hand into your palm. Yeah. And then it sits right in front of your left eye. So it's kind of like putting your training your arm back to like when you used to do the push-pull. You're going to naturally fight your own recoil instead of the grip method. So we'll see what happens. Because obviously shooting left didn't work for me because <laughs> I don't know. Normally I'm better shooting left than that. So, so, so you just says. rest it in here. I'm going to go on the right side middle ring. So you're like, you know, I'm tired of this. You just start shooting really fast. I need to have less rounds in my gun. <laughs> so. Well, unlike him who's shooting at one target, I'm going to move over to the Liberty Arms. I don't know why I just did that. They're actually Liberty Arms targets. That's if they're not. So. The reason uh, he came up with the car method, too, was one of the reasons was uh, breaching and going through houses and clearing buildings. Oh, because you can go around a corner. It kept the gun close. Yeah. And if an attacker came at you... You don't have to be four feet away. They were less likely to get your firearm. You had better control of it because it was closer into your body. So, I can't remember the guy who came up with it. Law enforcement. So, yeah. After my... Re you got another mag? No, I only have the two mags for this. Okay, I'm moving over talking. to the uh, Liberty Arms. I was talking like you do a lot. Targets. Talking a lot. He was talking a lot. Any bets as to how much of this gets cut? Hopefully, uh... I don't white out with the background in this white shirt. I'll just do a floating head. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dropped you into a puddle. Because me. You know, you try to autofocus for color. And you try to find the right one to give you the right balance. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Asshole. Okay. So I'm down to my last hundred from the first hundred. And I got the phone back up and Wait. going after dropping it in the snow. You're down to the, your last hundred out of your hundred? Yeah, I have eight. Oh, I have gosh. 28 left, and then I have another 120 uh, rounds. 18 round mags eat, quit, eat it up quite, pretty quick. Yeah, steady diet of 147 grain. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm using 147 grain because, as I showed earlier, my carry is Federal HST 147 grain. He told me to carry what I shoot, so I'm shooting what I carry. Right. I'm gonna do these up top, and I'm gonna do the last 10 on the bottom. I'm not showing any of the GoPro footage because it looks awesome and I don't want to embarrass anybody. You believe me? Just don't shoot your GoPro now. If I aim at the GoPro, I might hit the star. I'm not even like in back of the gun right now. Do you notice that? Yeah. I just noticed that. I'm like looking, I'm turning the gun into my sight. That's the wrong way to shoot, kids. Ow. I'm very disappointed in myself. The first mag looked great. Daniel's disappointed in me too, aren't you, Daniel? Yeah, very much so. Anyways, it's not the gun's fault. It's my fault. I'm just not trying. I'm going to turn off the camera now, and I'm going to hit bullseye every time. So say bye, Daniel. Bye. So that was the shooting portion. 
100 rounds, actually put 220 rounds through it, never had a single problem. Fired every time, shot the shells out like a cannon when it was the brass shells. The aluminum shells actually just seemed to plop out. I mean, it's not like they were in danger of not coming out. It's just they came out and they didn't go as far. I don't know if it was a weight thing or because the brass uh, cartridges are much more polished than the aluminum are, which is what I'm thinking, that when it's sliding back out of the chamber, the aluminum ones are sticking a little bit more. But again, not a single misfire, misfeed, nothing, no failure to feeds. The mags were still loud, so I think it's just a spring issue. Maybe they'll break in eventually. But we had fun. Yes, I wasn't that accurate. I have excuses for it. Some of them are actually valid. One of them being that I do have issues with my body. It's the easiest way to put it. I have two collapsed vertebrae in my neck. So, you know, too long doing that can cause issues. I have um, muscle problems. I have nerve damage. I have uh, what's called MCTD, mixed connective tissue disorder. Basically, I'm a wreck. So, I didn't go to bed until like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I've been trying to work out recently because I don't like being fat, and I was getting fat because I've been sedentary, but by the end of the day, I didn't film it, but by the end of the day, I was moving probably about that much, just trying to hold the gun, Just and anything here is multiplied when you're talking about a 7 to 10 yard target, so yeah, it, it that's the reason I didn't shoot well. It's not an indictment on the pistol. The pistol is fabulous. It's wonderful. It's It runs like a Lexus. You may not like it. You may not care for the way it looks. You may not be that kind of a person, but you have to admit that what this package is, is a very well put together, functional, and relatively lightweight full-size pistol. So if you want something that's a little bit lighter than, say, the tactical, which is Again, almost 13 ounces heavier, 12 to 13 ounces heavier than this pistol, but the exact same pistol, then go with this one. If you prefer that heavier field, which honestly, after shooting and we were driving back, he was like, what do you think of it? And I was kind of going a little meh because I actually like the kick of a 45, so maybe I need to look at a 97. But what I can say is that the grip, the way it shoots, its accuracy when it's in the hands of somebody like Daniel who knows how to shoot is actually pretty damn impressive. So should you go and buy one? Sure. Is it right for you? Maybe, maybe not. This has a adjustable back strap and we actually had the smallest one on there. So it was comfortable for Daniel to shoot. He doesn't always like my full frame frames. Uh, the canics that I would sometimes bring out are wider and they're from back to front are actually deeper so he doesn't care for those as much but this one he said he could shoot it fine so and quite frankly i was shooting better one-handed than i was two-handed so again could lend itself to me not being able to track well so that's episode three in the books you can check this one off cz 75 p01 phantom good gun runs great definitely worth a look if you're looking for a full-size polymer handgun if you're going to compare it to something like a canic uh, which, if you get a TP9SF Elite, can get close to this price. Or if you're looking at like the HK VP9s, the Sig Sauer P320s, all those guns are in the same kind of ideal. They're tactical, they're, you know, polymer with steel slides, so they're all worth taking a look at. But I would definitely say if you want that CZ quality, you should buy a CZ. If you like this video, why don't you go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We're getting so close, guys. Almost at a 1,000. Let's get there, and then we can uh, have even more fun than we're having now. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, whichever side it's on. I'm not asking you to join my Patreon, although you could. I'm not asking you to do anything fancy. All I'm saying is just hit that subscribe button. Check out my videos. I do car videos, gun videos, tech videos, uh, talking head videos. So... Yeah, I do a little bit of everything, and you may find something else you enjoy too. So so I guess all I can say is CZ75 P01 Phantom. If you can get one for a good price, I highly suggest it. If you can't get one for a good price, and I'll talk to you later.